Hello everyone. Uh, uh, hello everyone, and welcome back to uh, a continuation on this movie, The Keep, uh, directed by Michael Mann and starring Ian McKellen and a bunch of other actors. And it is based on the F. Paul Wilson novel. And if you want to know more about that, uh, link is in the description about this uh, video right here that's got to do with all the information as well. My effort on uh, fixing the film and doing the best I can with all this kind of stuff. I mentioned in the video, I couldn't get my hands on the book because one, they were expensive and two, it was difficult to get me a copy. Where I am is in Australia, so I get people from time to time where they give me links of stuff from America. I'm like, I this. But wait a second, um, I had a bit of Christmas money. Just look up on eBay and searched for some books. And I stumbled upon some F. Paul Wilson books, but I'll get into that later on. But I also found something much more interesting. Of a bunch of magazines on the film. In fact, I'll just quickly show you them. So the first magazine I got was this one right here. It's a series called Fantastic Films. Now, I think I've actually had some of these during my school prep years, and I read some of them, but I can't remember the uh, details about the, the magazines they were, or what film it, films they had. Now, I, had, I struggled to figure out if I wanted to make this an individual video. So even though this magazine contains stuff with a keep, but it also contains other stuff, that is even cooler. I mean, it doesn't have to be just to do with one thing. I like having things that contain with a bunch of other things like Doctor Who, Hedgehog's Guide to the Galaxy, and etc. It's really cool. Yeah, look. Contains so much stuff, like some Don Post masks, and makeup, even some books here from Stephen King and some bunch of other authors. Yeah, other properties, and plus this is sort of like a thing to get your sign, join the science fiction book club, and before you had, you can get the internet, you had to like, call people and call get them delivered or you have to go to a warehouse and pick it up for yourself those were the days um, I wasn't around during then but still here's an image from one of the images from the keep this was not in the film this might be a scene that was cut out or a promotional foot uh, photo I have no idea so here's some of the contents this reaction data bank and some of the keep and some Douglas's and Adams interviews that he did dog to in Headcheckers Guide, the TV show, the original show, and pretty interesting. You got the uh, original Dune movie. That's uh, one hell of a film back then. Yeah, but it looks a bit. <laughs> Some merchandise, and that's interesting. Here's a bunch of information. I don't know if, how well you could see all this since it, my camera likes to go blurry when it's not all in focus. Apologize, there's nothing I can do about that. You know, I, I could do a, you know, I can do a second video and go full in detail, probably a better camera angle and such. Uh, what is this? Armageddon comes to the 80s. From Testament to the day after. And literally, what does that say literary? I don't know, it's hard to read from, since it's a bit all over the place, there's no really, um, layered out text there, but... I think it's a it's an actual film to do with Judgment Day and all that kind of crazy stuff, like the end of the world and yeah, yeah. Look at all those people, man. Yeah, I've never seen it before. I might have a look at it. Let's see how it's. All right, here we go. Here's all the stuff to do with the keep. This image and that image, uh, I think you could is seen in the film. I'm not sure about that image. I have no. I don't. I don't know about that one. I could be wrong. Um, but this image here, this is not, I don't think this is meant to be seen in the film. But more of a, uh, photo shot of what the costume looks like in development. Directed by Michael Mann, transforms a tale of gothic horror into a surrealistic a fairy tale for adults in his Scream ad adaptation of F. Paul Wilson's best-selling novel, The Keep. I'm pretty sure the author, well, this is just a bit of a context, um, since the movie didn't do so well when it was released, 
in theaters because the movie had so many issues behind it. Paramount couldn't really f release a longer movie. Those were the times where some of the companies had to like, they had to like shorten down the film because they couldn't make it as long as they wanted it. Um, that was kind of the rules back then. I I'm going to keep asking, when are we going to get a full cut version of this? And we probably won't. I'm going to talk more about that later anyway. Ah, uh, here we go. Some more, uh, some images that some people have never seen before and some have. Uh, this image, I th think we have seen this one in film. We have definitely not seen this one in film and not a close up of this. This one is, if I remember the context correctly, this is a deleted scene that was cut out from the film where they main character and the villain fight each other to the death um i'm not sure about if this was in a film or just a behind the scenes or just whatever photograph for the public but this is a really cool close-up photo of mosala's uh second form as you would call it uh, this one right here is interesting this one is a image of the villain Mosala coming into the keep. This is, I think, where he attacks the soldiers. And we only get to hear them. And I think he was terrorizing in the village. I have no idea. That's why he was not in the keep and he went back in. That's just speculation. This image right here with uh, Lachlan, the main character. After fighting Mosala, he gets resurrected. Um, this looks like an image that of when the villain first got released out from prison. This image here, yeah, that's one we have seen before, but this one right here, very um, debated thing. If these were just uh, public photos or scenes that cut out for timing, when the priest has gone corrupted by the powers of the villains, part of the talisman as well, he starts to go crazy and eats his dog. I think there's more information about in the book to do with the story. Obviously, that's how it is. And like I said before, the movie was very um, cut down. So context is also being taken out. Doctor Who, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, the, the original TV show, one of my two favorite uh, shows. Um, I also don't mind, I actually love the, uh, the movie of Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. That's pretty cool. You got some information about him talking about what it was like and during Christmas and that's really nice. Ah, Dune is one hell of a film and I absolutely they did remake it and it's also a brilliant film and I can't wait for the other parts of the story. I don't know. I don't know any of the uh, details at the moment, but yeah, this was, was hell of, one hell of a film. A humongous production, a huge budget film that ended up, I think if I remember correctly, it was a big bomb at the time, I'm not too sure, but it was one hell of a film, I, no doubt, it was just so ahead of its time. I think it was an interview where the special effects and the director was going bat crazy about how he wanted the film, and yeah, anyway, David, David Lynch, here's some more interesting photos and stuff. Brainstorm. Oh, what's that? Well, I think my dad might find that very interesting. Yeah, I might come back to these magazines in another video and explain some more information. Ah, some more Hedgehog's Guide to the Galaxy stuff. Did watch a lot of documentaries behind all the, uh, the shows, so sometimes documentaries like to keep some stuff out, and sometimes they don't mention some things. So there might might be some new stuff in here that I didn't re didn't know about. Some adverts, things to buy. That's really cool. Fire of an Eyes. Now that's the show I've never seen before. Yeah, I might check that out and see what it's like. Oh, some interesting stuff about the fly and other movies from the 50s. That, yeah, from 1950 and 59 by the looks of this stuff. Anyway, moving on to the next one. Oh yeah. Um, this one was easy to find because this I got this one first from Australia. Originally, this one I was going to get first. I only could find these in America. Until months later, when I got this magazine, and I saw this one on eBay that was in Australia selling it. Instantly got it for my Christmas money, which was like 
This one was like 70 or 60 dollars. This one was more 40. This was 40 dollars. This was 60. Yep. This one's by Fantastic Films. This one's by Fangoro. Which is, I think, more of an American magazine company from UK and such. And this is the only magazine I'm gonna get. Like I said before, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be collecting a lot of magazines. But if I saw any personally that were selling like very cheap, yeah, we just get a whole bunch. But but I wouldn't buy any on the internet for the sake of it unless I saw them in person selling very cheap the whole I'm only after ones that got to do with a keep. But it's like I said before, it's still pretty cool to get other stuff that isn't related to the film. Anyway. Here's some more masks. I'm not sure if they're Don Post Studios. So flaps open, <laughs> and of course, uh, a poster of one of the ghosts from The Shining. There is a an image that are behind the scenes of during the making of what looks like the costume of Mosala. This is pretty cool. Um, I'm pretty sure you can get a. I found a website you can a whole bunch of photos and information about the movie and behind the scenes and stuff. I was able to get it. Unfortunately, the website is not safe anymore to go on considering it's, um, yeah, contained. Once almost got a virus from looking at it, so it's a bit sad, really. Um, <sighs> Dawn of the Dead. Anything with George Romero is good quality. It was zombie-related stuff. And his non-zombie film called um, The Crazies. Do related stuff here. That's good. That's good. 20th anniversary special uh, celebration of the TV series that has won a world acclaimed exclusive. This fantastic album <laughs> available, probably not anymore. Um, the Shape of Rage, isn't that? Yeah, that's a David Cronenberg book. I would like to get that actually. Now, here's some more behind the scenes of the keep. The creature effects of the keep. Uh, Nick Mayley on the uh, makeup effects scene in Michael Mann's Thriller. Yeah. So this wasn't part, this was a costume, but one of the puppets. Yeah. I do remember that Michael Mann's uh, little bit of history behind this film was that he kept changing designs, kept changing things, and yeah, I had some issues while. And I have seen footage that someone put on YouTube that it was all behind the scenes of this film and one of the uh the actors that had to wore one of the, these costumes he had like makeup over and it. it was really interesting stuff and in how they did it all besides looking at these photos um i might send a link there so you can find it yourself yeah and i do know that in the book the Mosala, the villain, was more normal looking. It looked more like a vampire. And considering that there was a lot of vampire movies at the time, I guess they wanted to do something different with this character. They want to make him look different. They didn't want to make him look boring. Anyway, there's the iconic image of him right there. And one of the uh, sculptors who started making the mask design, which is pretty cool. And this is something interesting. I know some people probably don't think much about is that the villain's eyes what they have the they're not just red they have pupils and there's only one scene that i can find i think because of the special effects artist uh, sadly passed away during production he didn't probably get to finish the, yeah the special effects I, I mentioned in the other my other video so either some people had to quickly do them in man in a way that they can get the film out. So the eyes were so glowing, in fact, you couldn't see the pupils. And there's only one scene I can find or I can see in the film where you get to see his pupils. Um, Ian McKellen's character goes up and confronts Mosala and he shoots a bolt of lightning through his hands. And that brief scene where you can see him do that, his, his eyes are exactly like this. Yeah. Okay, here's an interesting photo behind what Mosala looked like in his first form. Because he was like a just energy and 
This, you can see his brain, his eyes, and whatever this could be. Um, they, I, like I said before, they wanted to do something different with this character design. They want to make him something that isn't considered boring at the time. Because there was a lot of vampires, a lot of character designs that just look identical to what was described in the book. So, they came up with this idea where it was just fog and smoke. And all you could see was his eyes. But you couldn't really see the brain at all. So, this is pretty cool. Here's a better good look at the image of one of the Nazi soldiers gets his life taken out of him. It just looks like that. Man, I bet you he's been working out at the gym lately during his uh, imprisonment in the movie. But I can definitely say that this close-up image you don't get to see in the movie. It might be another, just a photo or a close-up or just a cut scene. I have no idea. But i got to say, and considering there's a company named Prop Store, who collects, sells, but keeps in good shape of used props throughout history. And Adam Savage, who interviews these guys, Adam Savage, who, who works into making stuff and films and props, and he was also Mythbusters, he's one of my favorite. He's one of my, and he's also got his own YouTube channel, Tested, uh, talk about some of the props they have, and a bit of, a bit of history, it's pretty cool. And I always thought that this costume of Mosala has to be somewhere or scrapped from parts or just in the bin sadly considering that it was mostly like that at the time with films being made but um yeah I'm very intrigued to know where this costume rubber suit is um, I'm not considering it buying it myself because it would probably be worth a million pounds of money but just very curious a bit of history I like to see or find or kept somewhere safe or carefully restored in careful condition anything really uh, what's this city of the walking dead zombie of the month so this is a zombie film I've never seen before Bizar 3d posters are they articulate or are they literally 3d 3D posters of galactic battles. Okay, move. Uh, yeah, it doesn't explain what they like. And I'll probably do another video on these magazines. Ah, Christine. I think I remember, again, I also got this magazine also because it had the key, but also because it's got stuff to do with Christine because I love that film. Um, directed by John Carpenter, one of my favorite and one, one of the few uh, directors that inspired me. He also made this film and the letdown he had during when The Thing came out because E.T. also came out the same year as the horror film The Thing. So there was a bad rap because people would refer there was a nice alien and it was just bad timing all around. Anyway, The Thing is a good film and because he had to make this to the um, controversy he got from The Thing, which I love that film. Uh, but Christine, I also love because it's also one of my... I also just got the Stephen King book to read, but it's also one of my favorite films, and it's one of my favorite vehicles, and just one of those um, trope stories to do with uh, school, college, kids fighting against evil, and, you know, it's, it's romance, and they're involved and stuff like that. So, yeah. Oh, what's this? It's Photos as well. Some people's works. Some grotesque stuff as well. There's a calendar, of course there's a calendar, that's pretty cool. Yeah, overall it's, it's a good magazine. These were these two are definitely magazines I'm gonna have a better look at later. The, those magazines are really cool and I uh, will later have a look better look through those the same time when I bought those magazines during Christmas, I found myself the books, the F. Paul Wilson books. They were on eBay and they were selling like hot pancakes. People were getting them and originally I had the, uh, the cover to do with the castle. It was more of like a smaller book. And as soon as I was going to get that, that was sold. Found another one, sold again. So I had to like rush to get one before it's someone else's sold. So I finally got it. And I gotta say, I, I, I can't believe I got this. I'm happy I did, and 
What's really cool is that you can read this while listening to the soundtrack from the film. It fit, it works perfectly with this. I did a quick read of this, actually. Now, apparently this is the first edition. Uh, apparently not, I thought it was. No, wait a minute. Um, first published Great in Britain in 1982. That's interesting. This was republic. This this edition was published in 1984. Okay, so this is probably not the first edition. My bad, my mistake. But look at that. Some information of the the castle, the keep, as you will. That's pretty interesting. I have never seen that before. And I definitely do need to get the this, the dust cover uh, laminated so I can preserve it a little bit more since it's uh, slowly ripping away. So yeah. What else could I say about this book? Um, uh, I only just quick read this, but I will say there were some accurate sequences that were in the film, and there's some of the art. There were more, uh, a lot more uh, sequences where most of are, and a full-on plot point behind his character. He's not a de he's not a demon. Um, he was kindly kind of described at first as a vampire. Then he actually wasn't a vampire. He's just lying his ass off and. Turns out he was he's much more older. I will say there is some crazy stuff. So when most of the kills all the soldiers and takes their soul or whatever. And later in the book they become uh, zombies in a way. Describe makes an army out of the dead. So yeah, it takes control of them. Um, there is a battle sequence in the book. Described like in the movie where it's in a blaze, but this parts of the castle gets destroyed um if if i remember correctly hey, i just did a quick read through of this but i'm going to really read this book later i was also thinking of doing an audio book uh video on it so yeah anyway i also decided to make this video because there's also going to be a remake coming out soon a remake what which is exciting Greg Nicotero, a makeup effects designer and supervisor who's done works of films like The Hills Have Eyes. I'm pretty sure he did work on um, The Walking Dead, I could be wrong, but I, I reckon the company A24 Films should be a part of this as well, like psychological horror, like The Lighthouse and some other films they work and I can see them being connected. Uh, I can just imagine this movie. Uh, being extremely more, I don't know how to describe it, it's more Patine-esque, more dark, I mean like, a lot like the how it was envisioned in the movie, but more uh, abstract, I guess you could say. Stuff to do with the book, stuff that wasn't in the movie, uh, some written stuff that was cut from the, the original movie. Yeah, I, I just can't wait to see it. If the remake of uh, The Keep is successful, I reckon they should do the other stories <laughs> that are connected to this. Um, you got The Reborn, you got The Tomb, and some other books I couldn't get at the moment, but I will later. Yeah, I, if this goes so well, I can imagine them doing uh, an entire movie series based on the first book and the other ones. If they do that, I would like to see um, Repair Jackman's character being developed in the other series right there. Yeah, anyway. This is all I got to say. Uh, there's not much else besides... I hope you liked this video. Please check out my Facebook page and Instagram page. Links in the descriptions down below. And I will see you... In the future.